Hello friends, this is Paul, and I hope you're enjoying wandering through nature with me each week. Well, if you enjoy wandering through nature and you enjoy journaling those wanderings, in other words, writing down or drawing whatever you find out there on our adventures, well, I've got an awesome nature journal for you. Yeah, I have three different nature journals with three different covers on them. The insides are pretty much the same. Lots of blank pages for you to write and draw all your experiences and your feelings while you're wandering through nature. The covers are different on each one of the three. And I also, for the young at heart or the youngsters who wander through nature with you, I have a children's nature journal, which is a guided nature journal. Lots of pages filled with ideas and suggestions for adventures in nature. Maybe they want to go exploring nature at night, doing a bug night. Well, they can do that with my suggestions and they can write everything down in their journal. And of course, I did leave some pages blanks for the youngsters to actually fill them out. Where can you get these awesome journals? Well, they're available now on Amazon. Yeah, Amazon.com. Do a search for author Paul Ferringer, and you'll find the Nature Wanderer journals. And I'm in the middle of creating some new ones, so keep an eye out and grab those journals while they're available. Have a great day, and keep wandering through nature. Hello friends, I'm Paul and this is the Nature Wanderer Podcast. I'd like to wish you a happy holidays. I hope everyone is not too stressed out yet with all the chaos of the season. Other than some local small business shopping, I try to avoid the craziness of the shopping scene and the stress of what am I going to get this person or that person? Yeah, it's crazy this time of year. The hustle and bustle of the season can be stressful and I highly recommend adding some new traditions that will help to calm the nerves such as midwinter hike or maybe a relaxing day listening to the birds. Many studies have shown that being in nature is good for health, it's good for relaxation, it's what you really need this time of year. Yeah, I don't know what your year has been like this holiday season, but mine, it's been fairly relaxing. I've learned over the years not to go with all the hustle bustle and craziness. So I seem to be able to downsize things every year. I make things easier every year, less craziness every year. So I'm hopefully going to pass some of that on to you so that you can do the same thing. So whether you celebrate the traditional Christmas or maybe you celebrate Hanukkah or maybe you don't celebrate anything, maybe you don't have any religious connection, that's all right. You know, I'm sure you have been sucked into the commercialism anyhow that this season seems to bring. I mean, you have the holiday specials on TV, it's which is actually one of my relaxing and favorite things to do this time of year. All the sappy Christmas stories, you know, the movies that you know as soon as it starts you know exactly how it's going to end. Especially when the the girl runs into this guy in some strange way. Usually it's a mishap and they weren't meant to meet. And you know, by the end of the movie, they're going to be hooked up together. I hate to be a spoiler, but hey, every sappy Christmas movie seems to be the same. And, you know, even though we like, I should say, even though we know the ending of the movie, my wife and I love to watch them this time of year. That's one of our traditions that have, that's gotten us away from the craziness 
of this time of season, the commercialism. And you've probably been sucked into all the sales going on, Black Friday sale, all of the different things going on TV, the advertisements. Yeah, the businesses are trying to suck you in. And whether you celebrate Christmas or not, they're usually pretty good at getting you into the craziness of the holiday season. And you probably have friends or family who do celebrate Christmas or Hanukkah or whatever. So I want to talk a little bit about how, well, you can actually change your view change the whole commercialism, get away from the craziness. So whether you celebrate Christmas or not, um, there's many environmentally harmful practices that have become a staple of the season. And I'd love to spend the entire episode talking about the piles of tinsel and non-recyclable wrapping paper that is piled like mountains at the curb, ready to head to a landfill after all the celebrations are over. Or maybe the carbon footprint of the gifts that we give because they have to be imported from other countries. Or the millions of batteries for toys that will end up in a landfill, leaching toxic chemicals into the earth. But I don't want to put more stress and anxiety into your holidays, so I won't go on that soapbox. This time of year, we should be focusing on the good, the joy of the season, spending time with family and friends. I'd like to talk about new traditions for the holidays that will not only calm the chaos, but will help you to be more in tune with nature. Believe it or not, the origins of Christmas were actually filled with nature, many of which came from the celebrations of the winter solstice, from bringing live trees into our homes to lighting Yule logs. We have taken many non-Christian traditions with a connection to nature and pulled them into our holiday celebrations. The true meaning of Christmas is supposed to be the celebration of the birth of Christ. Yet most historians are in agreement that we don't truly know the date of Christ's birth. We don't know his true birthday. The day in December, December 25th, the date was chosen to steal the attention away from the non-Christian or pagan, if you want to use that term, celebrations of the winter solstice. So what is this winter solstice? Well, if you are listening to this episode on the day that it was released, it is today, December 21st. Yes, today is the winter solstice. It marks the end of fall and the beginning of winter. It is the shortest day of the year, which unfortunately means it's the longest nights of the year. Many of the traditions that celebrate the winter solstice were to celebrate the birth, I'm using air quotes on that, of the sun. In the southern hemisphere, south of the equator, the winter solstice is actually celebrated in June. And this time of year is the summer solstice. And you're probably wondering, well, why are they celebrating summer solstice in the Southern Hemisphere? Okay, the whole reason for this darkness, these long, dark nights and the cold weather moving in is because of the tilt of the earth away from the sun. Which, if the northern hemisphere is tilting away from the sun, the southern hemisphere is tilting towards the sun. And it does the opposite during our summers in the northern hemisphere, north of the equator. I remember when I went to Iceland, we went there in the summertime, and it was daylight, 24 hours. It got a little bit darker at night, but not really dark. I mean, you had to have 
light darkening shades in order to sleep at night. So it was pretty bright out. You could have stayed up all night long and done things outside with having to worry about it being dark. And in the winter time, this time of year, up in Iceland, it's dark almost all day. So that's what happens is the tilt of the earth. The winter solstice is a time for renewal and beginning, according to most cultures. The days start to get longer, and if you live way up north, like I was saying, the never-ending nights will stop, and the sun will begin to give some warmth and life to your area. So these long winter nights starting to disappear. Time for renewal. Time for rebirth. That's what a lot of cultures believe. Renewal and beginning. And this is why many celebrations included bringing life into the household with wreaths and trees. Kind of like we do now. We have Christmas trees that we bring into our house. Now, before we started using all these plastic trees, well, the trees were live. So you're bringing these live trees into your house. You're bringing other live plants into your house. All of this came about because it's a celebration of life. Holly, mistletoe, these were also included in many of the traditions. Bringing live plants plants into your house, life into your house, renewal, beginning. Now, these celebrations were also known as Yule celebrations, Y-U-L-E, which is a term that we now associate with Christmas. So non-Christian celebrations were incorporated into the Christian holiday of Christmas, Now, one winter solstice legend actually tells about the deer mother who would carry the sun safely into the sky in her antlers. And guess what she was dragging behind her? She was actually dragging the sun god's sleigh. Sounds to me like a precursor to the legends of Santa Claus and the sleigh and the reindeer. Yes, so this is another one of the legends that was passed on to modern culture, our celebrations of today. All of this happened because of traditions in the past. So in this time... When the winter solstice is upon us, it might be a good time for you and I to think about letting go of the seasonal stress of the shopping and the craziness and the crowds and all the hurry. Yeah, trying to get rid of that. And how do we do that? Well, by doing what they used to do during the winter solstice. Now, the winter solstice in the old days, in the past, before the Christian holiday started, it was actually more for the people who were farmers. I mean, they lived off the land. They were farmers. And the winter solstice was the beginning of winter, the end of fall. So it was a time to put down the plow to take a rest, to spend time with family, to enjoy relaxing and doing the things that you want to do, not the job that you have to do. And that's what we should start doing. Getting rid of the chaos by incorporating some of the winter solstice celebrations into our own lives. Using the time to reflect, let go, Set new intentions for the new season. And in a couple of weeks, or actually I think it's about a week away, a little over a week, then you can do the same thing. Set new intentions for the new year. 
So use some of the traditional methods of winter solstice celebration to bring these things into your life. Here's a few ideas that you may want to make new seasonal traditions in your household for the holidays. Maybe you want to decorate a tree. Oh, you'd probably do that already. Well, I'm talking about a live tree outside. So decorate an outdoor edible tree. For the animals. Maybe make some ornaments out of pine cones with peanut butter on it and then you roll them in seed. I know you're thinking, hey, we used to do that as kids. Well, you can still do it now. Yeah, get a pine cone out of the woods, start smearing peanut butter all over it. Try to get a natural peanut butter with no additives. These birds live in nature. They don't want the chemicals and the food colorings in their system. So get a natural peanut butter, spread it all over this pine cone. And then you take it, you put some bird seed out on some plastic sheeting or on your counter, and you roll the peanut butter covered pine cone in the seed, the bird seed. Attach a piece of yarn to that pine cone and you hang it up in your tree. Oh, little note here. Put the yarn on before you roll it in the peanut butter and the seed. It's less messy on your fingers. So I always put the yarn on the pine cone first. Then I put the peanut butter on and then the seed. And then you can hang it from the tree. It's a nice looking ornament and you're also helping the wildlife. You're feeding the birds. Another nice ornament that you can hang off your tree is more like a garland, but you take some string, get a heavy needle, one that the string, you want a heavier type string, you don't want to strangle any birds, but you take that string and you thread the needle and then get some fruits some maybe some blueberries, some raspberries, uh, different berries, and start threading this onto the string. So you make a natural garland out of fruit. So decorate your tree, your outdoor tree, with all these different food, edibles for the animals, for the birds, and the other animals, the squirrels will enjoy it as well. You can hang some nuts from the tree or just set them in the tree. All these different things. You're helping the animals and you're also doing an outdoor tree. Another nice tradition you may want to do, spend the night by candlelight. You could even call it spiritual candlelight. It soothes the soul. Remember, in the old days, they used to do this. They used to light up candles in their houses. It was just the way it was because they didn't have electricity and they needed the light, but it was also long nights. You want to have some sort of light pretty much all day long when you didn't have any. So it'd be nice to just now do it safely. Candles can be dangerous, so make sure they're not near any shades or curtains. Place your candles around the house. Maybe have a nice candlelight dinner with your family or your spouse. And put candles out. Just stop using electricity. Maybe read a book. Tell some winter solstice stories. You can find some online. You can maybe tell some nature stories. Some Native American nature stories. Make this a tradition. Just have an entire evening of no electricity. No cell phones either. So do this as a tradition to remember the simple life. And also, it teaches gratitude. This is a great time of year for gratitude. Being thankful for what you have. Aren't you thankful that you have electricity? If we didn't, you wouldn't be listening to this podcast and learning all these great new things about nature. So try it just for a night. Do an entire night by what I like to call spiritual candlelight. Now, another thing that you can do, Stonehenge. 
is associated with the winter solstice. You can experience the winter solstice at Stonehenge. Now, unless you want to spend a lot of money to fly to England, to Stonehenge, and you want to put up with the hundreds of people that gather there every year at the winter solstice, I would recommend doing this experience virtually. Yeah, you can actually watch the sunrise live on the internet. It's on YouTube. Do a search for Winter Solstice at Stonehenge on YouTube, and you'll find a live link to the site. And, of course, I will leave that link in the show notes for you so you can find it much easier. So this is a great, easy tradition. Just watch the winter solstice over Stonehenge, like hundreds of people are doing in person. And another tradition that I like to do, um, I usually don't do it on Christmas Day, but I try to do it on the winter solstice or sometime close to it. I like to do a winter solstice walk. So you go out in nature and just unwind. Maybe turn your cell phone off while you're on your hike. Try to find a place away from other people. Try to find a nice, quiet, secluded area. Now, do it safely. If you haven't listened to it yet, listen to my episode about safe winter hiking. Um, and make sure you dress for the weather. Make sure you let someone know where you are. And honestly, take someone with you. Take several people with you. So gather your friends, your family, and everyone go for a nice winter solstice hike. If you want to do it on Christmas Day, this is actually what my wife and I are doing because our kids are grown, the grandkids are coming over on Christmas Eve, and we're celebrating Christmas Eve. So Christmas Day, they're spending with their in-laws. So it's just my wife and I, and we are going to, if the weather is good, we're going for a nice Christmas Day hike out in nature, a nice quiet hike. Not sure where we're going yet. So make it a tradition, a winter hike. Now, another tradition that we associate with Christmas, the Yule Log actually comes from the pagan traditions of lighting up your house in the winter time, or I should say the fall slash winter. So the winter solstice is so dark, they would actually burn a Yule log in the fireplace to give more light, to give more heat. And we have turned that into taking a log and drilling some holes in and putting candles on and decorating it nice. Hey, nothing wrong with that. Burn it for the light, the candles, not the log, unless it's in your fireplace. Do it safely. Burn that Yule time log to bring light and remind you of the relaxation. Nothing like a fireplace sitting in front of a fireplace. That's mesmerizing and relaxing. And if you don't have a fireplace, hey, you can get a fireplace on, on YouTube or other streaming networks. Yeah, you can have one right on your television. It actually sounds like a real fire, looks like a real fire because they basically filmed a real fire. But yeah, the Yule Log, it's a great tradition. Another tradition which is great this time of year. I mean, all these things are great, especially the winter solstice walk. Very relaxing. But I always try to find more time than usual to do some meditation and some relaxation. I mean, I do yoga just about every morning. It really puts my mind, gets it ready for the day, this time of year, I find that I do a lot of it in the evening as well. So sometimes I'm doing the stretching and yoga twice a day, and I am finding myself doing more meditation this time of year, just to get me into that state of mind, that calmness, get out of the craziness of the season. So all of these are great traditions 
that you can start incorporating into your winter solstice, into your Christmas, your holiday celebrations. I highly recommend them because they are very relaxing. They also are often very helpful to the environment. I mean, doing a candlelight evening, think of all the electricity you're saving. Where's your electricity coming from? If you live by me, we're right near Niagara Falls. Unfortunately, no, we get a lot of our electricity from the Huntley Power Plant, coal-fired power. Yeah, the Niagara Falls Power Plant, a lot of that gets well, basically shipped elsewhere, that electricity, the nice, clean electricity. That's one of the reasons why I have a wind turbine and solar panels, so that I can, with a good conscience, say, hey, I'm not polluting the environment when I use electricity. But I also do conserve a lot. And burning candles one night... Hey, think of all the electricity you're saving, helping the environment as well. So start thinking about ways that you can incorporate old-time winter solstice traditions into your holiday season. Well, I think it's time for me to start working on some of my nature-friendly holiday traditions. I'm going to call it a day. It looks like we've come to the end of the episode. So I hope you enjoyed wandering through nature with me. Don't forget to invite your nature-loving friends to join us. If you like what you heard today and haven't already done so, please hit the subscribe button. Take a minute to rate and review the podcast. And if you have any nature questions or ideas for future episodes, feel free to drop me a DM on my Instagram page at the nature wanderer underscores in between each word, or my website at the naturewanderer.com. You can support the podcast by joining my Patreon, which will also give you extras, including videos, education classes, pictures, and much more. Or go to my Ko-Fi page. The links are in the show notes. And if you'd like to journal all your wanderings through nature, please check out my new nature journals, which can be purchased on Amazon. There are blank page journals for adults and guided journals for the youngsters. The link to purchase your journals is in the show notes. Show your support of the podcast and your love of nature by supporting a Nature Wanderer t-shirt or sweatshirt or other merch, which can be purchased at my new online store, which is linked in the show notes, and you can also get there from my website. Have a great week, and above all, keep exploring the nature around you. Did you know that plastic is made with oil, a fossil fuel that pollutes the environment? And did you know that only about 15% of all plastic is recycled into new products? Wouldn't it be awesome if we could live our lives without plastic so that we could stop harming the planet? Well, there's a company that wants to help you do just that. Life Without Plastic sells products that will reduce or eliminate your dependence on plastic. They have a large selection from toothbrushes to food storage containers to drinking straws, all plastic-free. And it's reasonably priced. So what are you waiting for? Check out all these great plastic-free products and help save the planet. Just click on the link in the show notes to find out more and to start your journey to being plastic-free.